At Turner Field in Atlanta, Georgia, the New York Mets play the Atlanta Braves. New York Mets baseball on SNY is brought to you by Good Humor. Get sweet treats from Good Humor at the concession stand and look for the official ice cream truck in your neighborhood this summer, June 2nd to the 26th. By Tri Honda, hurry to your local Tri Honda dealer for great deals on the 2016 models. By the State Farm agent of the game, Pat Cauley of Glendale. Contact Pat at patcauley.org. By Heineken, open your world. And by Bob's Discount Furniture, shop in store or online at mybobs.com. Mets are in Atlanta, home of the world's worst traffic. It really is. <laughs> Last year for Turner Field, the Mets' second to last visit, a chance for the Darno brothers to get together, a chance for a couple of ex-teammates to renew acquaintances, and some split family loyalties to come out. And a pleasant good evening, everybody, and welcome to Atlanta. Gary Cohen, Keith Hernandez with you tonight as the Mets open a four-game series against the Braves. Mets were on tenterhooks yesterday, awaiting the fate of some injured players, but everything's okay with Noah Syndergaard and uh, Zach Wheeler and Yuena Cespedes, although Cespedes had a cortisone shot in his wrist, and the Mets will play without him tonight. And for a compromised offense, Keith, to go without their big gun, they move James Loney up to the three-hole. This is a challenge tonight. Well, uh, this is not a great lineup, but stacked with left-handers against the youngster Matt Whistler, who is of a three a three and one lifetime against the Mets and has beaten him this year. So Terry's had to reshuffle the deck more than a few times this year. This is a ball club that has is not hitting. They're at the bottom of the pack almost in in batting average. Uh, they're struggling to score runs. But here they are, three and a half games out of first place. Meanwhile, the Braves have the worst record in the National League, but they swept the Mets last weekend at City Field. They had their six-game winning streak stopped last night by the Marlins. This is a better Braves team than they were the first month of the season. Well, the big part of them being a better Braves team is that Freddie Freeman, last time the Mets played here and at home the first two series, Freddie Freeman was off to a terrible start, a terrible slump. Well, he's red hot. You saw at the three-game series in New York, he pretty much tore up Met pitching. So he's the one guy in the lineup the Mets are going to have to be careful about. And one of the pitchers that they tore up was Matt Harvey, who's really had his struggles against the Braves. Matt had been going great guns until that last start against Atlanta. But it wasn't a good start, and he got the loss there. He gave, went six innings and gave up four hits. Ironically, back on May 3rd in New York, he matched up with Matt Whistler and was the loser in a 3 nothing game where Whistler threw a one-hitter through eight innings against the Mets. Just about a year ago, Whistler made his major league debut against the Mets, and he has had nothing but success against the Mets in his career. Well, a young career as it is, part of that trade with San Diego, uh, he came over here very highly touted, got a good breaking ball, a little sinker, knows how to pitch. He's had the Mets number, an ERA of 1.55 in four starts. Mets were hoping to beat up on the Braves last week, and that didn't work out. They'll try again in Atlanta tonight. Wrong Darno, come on. Mets and Braves, all the action on SNY.
Supply is brought to you by Tito's Handmade Vodka, America's original craft vodka. Visit us at titosvodka.com. By Geico, over 75 years of savings and service. And by City, proud partner of the New York Mets. Baseball's biggest stars will compete in the 87th All-Star Game July 12th on Fox. Vote for Ioannis Cespedes and the rest of the Mets by filling out your 2016 MLB All-Star Game ballot on your computer, tablet, or smartphone. Voting ends June 30th, so vote now at MLB.com slash vote. Now time for greater coverage of baseball brought to you by T-Mobile. The former Met farmhand Michael Fulmer. Knocked out in the fifth inning yesterday, but his Tigers still beat the Mariners, and his record has been spectacular of late. Michael Taylor had the worst night you can have. Five strikeouts and made the error to lose the game in the bottom of the ninth as the Dodgers beat the Nationals 4-3. That's five straight losses now for the Nats. Their lead down to three and a half over the Mats. And the Cardinals completed their sweep of the Cubs. The red-hot Matt Carpenter had a two-run double in the Cardinals' 7-2 win over the Cubs yesterday. Mets and Braves open a four game series. First pitch from Atlanta is coming right up. And Mets will try and figure out how to solve him. He was brilliant against the Mets back in early May. Here's your Geico Mets starting lineup. A little different look. James Loney hits third for the first time this year, the 53rd time in his major league career. As Dribble Cabrera homeward his last two games. First Mets shortstop to do that since 2008. And there is Whistler getting ready to make the start. Matt Whistler, born in Bryan, Ohio, 24 years of age, six foot three, 197 pounds, seventh round draft pick in 2011 by the Pods. His last outing, he did get a win against the Reds. He broke a four-game losing streak. And the Coors Light defense, Emilio Bonifacio, just called up. He gets his second start in left field. Last time in Cayarte uh, was not. Playing here on the infield, Freeman, who's been red hot, and Persinski, the veteran, who's always been a thorn in the Mets' side, always manages to get base hits when needed. 
Matt Whistler made his big league debut against the Mets a year and a week ago. Three and one lifetime against New York. Brian Snicker has done a nice job since taking over from the fired Freddie Gonzalez. Braves were 9 and 28 at the time of the change, 15 and 19 since. It's amazing. You know, you don't know if it's long lasting when I make a managerial change, but a team does seem to play a little bit better, and certainly the Braves have for Brian Snicker. I would think just from a pride standpoint, you've you Played poorly enough to have a, a manager fired. Right. Probably fires you up to try and prove that maybe you can do better. Curtis Granderson leads off. Curtis has been walking a little bit more lately. Three walks in his last two games. Whistler's first pitch, a fastball in for a strike, and we're underway. Whistler from Bryan, Ohio, was all set to go to Ohio State before the Padres took him in the seventh round out of high school in 2011. Throws low and in a ball and a strike to Granderson came over in the trade for Craig Kimbrell and Melvin Upton. Right before the season last year. And in a. Uh, in a year where the Braves are struggling he's been a bright spot pulled foul in mm. fact the Braves pitching staff has really picked it up during this. Stretch the last week where they've won six of seven the staff ERA is two point two eight. As Dribble Cabrera on deck and then James Loney for the Mets. Cabrera had himself a uh, really a wonderful ball game yesterday. One two to Granderson. And he misses with a breaking ball. Two and two. And that's the slider that has been giving the Mets trouble. It's been a very successful pitch for Whistler. You have to, it's a good down break. Got to make him get it up. And fouls it off. The Mets have identical home and road records yeah, this year now. 19 that. and 16 at home, 19 and 16 on the road. Ditto. It's funny how that works. Two years ago they couldn't win at home. Last year they couldn't lose at home. Into the shift and the shortstop Ibar playing on the right side throws out Granderson for the first out of the night. 6 3 put out in your scorecard. And a broken bat. Well, he can get a new one, can he? He can. Here's us dribble Cabrera, and Keith mentioned his game yesterday. Not just the home run, but the base running with that great slide at home plate, the defense. The only thing lacking in his game, Gary, is his speed. Doesn't have a lot of speed. He's a smart player, he's a good base runner, he knows how to play the game. And he's just been terrific for the Mets. From the right side, second home run in as many days. And only his second right handed home run this season. He's really picked up the power game lately. Lifts this one along the left field line. Bonifacio with a long run to get there. And he makes the grab for the second out. Bonifacio, who has really been well traveled, can still run. At age 31, and have to cover a lot of ground to get to the line to retire Cabrera. So two out of nobody on. Now the unlikely number three hitter James Loney with Cespedes out of the lineup tonight. Cespedes arrived here in Atlanta a couple of hours before the game. Remember he uh, saw the doctor last evening, and so he flew separately from the team. And when he arrived, he told the writers that he could play tonight. But Terry Collins was adamant that he wanted to give Cespedes the day after he got a cortisone shot yesterday and that's usually the, the way the doctors recommend it. You should because in the cortisone shot there's a little bit of Novocaine in it and that deadens the nerves obviously and uh, you don't want to hit with. Out feeling in your wrists or hands or elbow wherever you're getting your injection. Doesn't it also take a day or two to know whether the cortisone hit the right spot. It. Uh, if they hit the right spot you'll know in 24 hours. Mm -hmm. And it hasn't yet been 24 hours for Cespedes but the, the good news is that there seems to be nothing seriously mm -hmm. wrong with his wrist that pained him yesterday and it's something he's gone through before both uh, Cespedes said in 2013 and then again last year. In tied to Loney two and one. But you'd have to say uh, in an evening last night where the Mets were holding their breath and certainly their fans were that. Yeah, both Cespedes and Syndergaard maybe their two most important players were at the doctor 
the news could not have come back much better. Syndergaard is expected to make his start in Washington on Monday. No structural damage in his elbow. They just gave him some anti-inflammatories, and he should be good to go. Mm. Backdoor breaking ball misses, and it's three and one Deloney. Mets got in last night uh, into Atlanta around the nine o'clock, so they got a good night's sleep, got a nice meal, and were able to get some rest. You mean you had a nice meal? I did. Actually, I didn't. I had the burger on the plane. Really? Yeah, I don't want to have the late night meals. It's but just you're not a burger on the plane kind of a guy. No bun. Oh, okay. No bun. So it was a, a low carb airplane. Meal. Trying. Trying to lose the little, like a little boiler. Having I mean, a hard time getting rid of the boiler. I mean, were you inspired after you no, flipped was, the burgers no, the other day? No, I was not inspired. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> I just didn't want to eat at 10 o'clock at night. <laughs> When he takes an outside ball four in the midst of a two out base runner. So Whistler is averaged less than two and a half walks per nine innings. Issues a first inning walk. And that'll get Neil Walker to the plate. Walker is in one of the strangest spells he's been in all year. He's 0 for his last 15. He's probably hit nine balls hard during that 0 for 15. Well, he's down to 257, Gare. The 14 home runs are, I mean, he's on his pace to. He's going to clear 100 easily, I, I would think, unless he just goes in the tank, and I don't see that happening. Right now, it, it's one of those slumps that, that doesn't feel like a slump except for the results. Loney at first with two down, and Walker pounds one foul. It's funny how everybody comes back to where they usually are. I mean, Walker's not a 257 hitter, but uh, he got off to the red hot start. Daniel Murphy. Has come back to earth a little bit. He's he's fallen. He's dropped all the way to 347. We should all <laughs> drop to 347. I'll take it. <laughs> exactly. Whereas the Mets and Nats will renew acquaintances in D.C. starting on Monday, the second half of this road trip. Walker pulls one foul, and it's 0-2. Well, the uh, the Nats suffered a loss last night. That. Uh, the one the kind that really sticks in your craw for a while right I mean they, yeah. they had the lead in the ninth inning and uh, what looked like a simple base hit to center field by Yasiel Puig allowed him to circle the bases with the winning run uh, against the stop sign too, just off the DL Puig with the hamstring correct. Yep. And dove into home plate. And the Dodgers swept that series from the Nats have now lost five straight. Up and into Walker, but how about Michael Taylor? 0 for 5, five strikeouts, and then makes that error in center field that ends the game. And Dusty Baker's quote in the paper uh, was, "We got to give him a little love. No one feels <laughs> as low as he does after after this game." But the other thing that that ninth inning shows that is that, you know, it wasn't his fault, but the, the, you know, Sean Kelly closing instead of Jonathan Papelbon, they really miss Pap. I mean, as, as much as some people have mixed feelings about Papelbon, the fact of the matter is he's an established closer, yes. and Kelly is not. Well, they've lost five in a row, and um, Dusty Baker's quote in the paper was, "This is why you try to get off to a good start and build, get as much above 500 as you can, because every club hits a dry spell, and we're in one right now. And they got an off day today, they, and then they got three in Milwaukee before the Mets series." One two coming and Walker takes up and away two and two. Well the Nats have blown leads in the eighth inning or later three straight games or three games in the last five during this five game losing streak and where the Mets a few days ago were six games out and looked like yep. you know they were in danger. Now they're three and a half out coming off the two game sweep of the Royals. You just have to have enough healthy players to field the team. Slider misses outside, and so Walker has worked his way back into the count to three and two. There are the standings of the NL East. Miami continues to hold their own after they shut out the Braves last night. They're just a game behind the Mets. Loney will get set to run. Freeman will play behind him. Three and two, two down. And Walker mm. takes ball four. So Whistler, after getting ahead 0 and 2, issues his second straight walk. So the Mets, as they have so often done this year, running up a pitch count against an opposing starter in the opening inning. Well. Now the former Brave, three times over, Kelly Johnson, who still makes his home here in Atlanta, yeah. will get a turn at bat and a very early visit to the mound from Roger McDowell. 
Roger looks like he hustled out there. He had bad knees. I think he's had some knee, a knee replacement or knee surgery. And looks a lot healthier. He's been here, what, 10, 12 years, 11 years? Turner Field in its final season. They've got the number of games remaining posted on the left field wall. And uh, it matches Roger McDowell's number. Does that mean Roger goes out and pulls down the number tonight? <laughs> Loney at second, Walker at first with two down. And here's Johnson, who's gone off to a fast start in his latest tour with the Mets. Eight for 25, a 320 average, making his sixth start since coming back to New York. No matter where Kelly travels, and he has been just about everywhere, he only seems to come back to Georgia. That's where he makes his home. He has been a brave three separate times. Originally drafted by Atlanta. And Whistler gets a corner strike, one and one. Braves, of course, we mentioned uh, earlier, is our 9 and 27 at home. A terrible home record. The Mets swept the first series here early in the year. In fact, the Mets have won seven straight at Turner Field. That's unprecedented. Johnson lines one toward the middle. On the backhand, Peterson makes the play to end the inning. Nice play, Jace Peterson, to run that ball down and keep the Mets off the board. Matt Harvey takes the mound when we come back. At City Field, but he's actually pitched pretty well here in Atlanta. Here's the Braves starting lineup he'll face, brought to you by Hyundai. Jace Peterson up in the leadoff spot now with Malik Smith out for a few months after he had his thumb broken by Antonio Bastardo. Emilio Bonifacio recycled into left field. He's in the eighth spot. And oh, and there's the Land Rover numbers <laughs> for Big Matt. And you know he's not going to be happy with those. More hits than innings pitched, but it's been a big struggle for him. What gear was that? I don't know. Jace it's, Peterson takes in the eye strike. Matt had a three game streak broken of fine starts, beginning with the White Sox, Miami, and Milwaukee. And he got hit around pretty good by Atlanta. Four runs, seven hits over six innings that last start, and the curveball misses high. One and one to Peterson. Who's been swinging the bat very well since coming back from a stint in the minor leagues? Peterson, 11 games since his return, hitting 342, and that's earned him that leadoff spot. Well, we keep an eye on Matt. Matt mentioned after his start against the Braves, his last start, that they were very aggressive, and he's, I think he started overthinking. And um, he does like to pour in that fastball early to get his rhythm. Falls behind on Peterson three and one. And are in Ciarte on deck, then Freddie Freeman. Well, 
There's Dan Worth, and it's been a labor of love with Matt Harvey this year. Laced into right center, a base hit for Peterson to start the Braves' night. Fastball three and one. Down where lefty likes it. And what's he got there? Oh, that's his thumb guard. Okay. So here's Enciarte, who was a one man wrecking crew in that Saturday night game in New York. With his base running and his defense. Enciarte, who had a late start to his season because of a hamstring injury, getting 230 for the year. There goes Peterson, and it's nubbed along the line, a foul ball. Boy, he had a jump, too. Not sure where that, that was. hit and run. Is that a design as a hit and run? We'll play? take a look at the runner, I guess, and see if he looked back, but he got a heck of a jump. I don't see him looking back, Gareth. It looks like to me it was a straight steal. Well, if you're in Ciarte, then as the number two hitter, don't you have to take the pitch if Peterson has that kind of jump? Well, what did Matt? Harvey mentioned after that start that they're an aggressive team. They come out of the shoot, swing on the bat. Peterson has just one stolen Got base, him. and Harvey picks him off. It looked like he was stuck in mud that time trying to get back. After Peterson had run on the previous pitch, Harvey picks him off. Caught him on the step. It's all timing, and he did get him. Looked like that right foot slid as he tried to plant it. Yep, and. Beautiful snap tag by Loney, the advantage of that left handed first baseman. And Matt Harvey is very quick on his move. Curveball hit to the hole, a base hit for Enciarte. So back to back hits for the Braves to open the bottom of the first, and that makes that pickoff look huge with Freddie Freeman coming up. And we'll take a look, quick look at your Mets defense, your Metropolitans, your faves from Lex, brought to you by Lexus. Conforto back in left field, Diaz getting the start, of course, with Cespedes with the injection. Kelly Johnson has started at third base. Loney, Walker, Ash Cabrera, and then Travis Darno his second start since coming off the deal. Nicely handled. Really? Very nice. Oh, gosh. Just the speed with which you well, I had a rattled nice, through I had a, that. I had a little 45-minute cat nap before I came to the park. Feel refreshed and exciting. Blackout curtains. Here's Freddie Freeman who's been tearing it up. Last week's National League Player of the Week, in part because of his exploits against the Mets. And Harvey misses low and away. Freeman over the last 10 games hitting 452 with nine extra base hits in those 10 games. Remember how in April, how terrible he looked. 77 strikeouts on the year already. That is not Freddie Freeman. He does strike out, but not 77 at this point in the season. That's put Kelly Johnson, the third baseman. On the right side of the infield between Loney and Cabrera, or between Loney and Walker, with Cabrera alone on the left side. Mm. That's a good change up by Harvey to get even on Freeman. That kind of says it right there. Eight RBI in nine games. The OPS, Gary, you know more about that than me. On base plus slugging. I know. I know what it means. <laughs> okay. Let's clarify. <laughs> Freeman lifts one to left, chasing Conforto back, but he's got room. Big ballpark. And that's the second out, and Inciarte back to first. That's 380 in left center field, 390 in right center field. It's big, big park. So two out. Enciarte is still at first, and here's Nick Marquez. That's really all the more amazing that Chipper Jones and Andrew Jones were able to feast and hit with power in this ballpark. This is 390 is a long way. And this ballpark was built for the Braves' pitching staff in the 90s, one of the most dominant staffs ever, and they loved those deep gaps. El Marquez is. The leader in RBIs on this team with 39. Freeman with 26 off to that terrible start, but Marquez hasn't been hitting for average, but he's driven in runs. He was batting leadoff early in the season and doing a nice job getting on base, but they've moved him down to an RBI spot. That 
that's popped up. Johnson might have a play right near the stands and mm. reaches but can't quite get it. First row. He ran out of room. Oh, son. You've got to keep your eyes open if you want to catch those pop ups. <laughs> the kid had his eyes closed. Gary, did you notice that? If you can close your eyes, you're better off sheltering in place. So Harvey ahead on Marquecas 0 and 2, and Ciarte who can steal a base. See if he's going on 0 and 2. And Harvey has the same thought. Matt does a good job holding runners on, and he's got a very good snap move over to first. He's given up seven stolen bases this year in nine tries, and it's not great, but certainly not the worst on the Mets staff. Well, this Braves team has 39 stolen bases coming in. That's eighth in the National League. They're not burning it up. And their uh, their best base dealer, Malik Smith, is now out, so. It changes things a little bit. And Ciarte has five steals this year, and he's running. And that's hit in the air to shallow right. Back goes Walker, and he picks it off to retire the side. Two hits, but the pickoff helps Harvey. After one in Atlanta, no score. Those are the career numbers against each team. Matt Harvey, who has struggled against the Braves, and Matt Whistler, who's had his best games against the Mets. In oh. those four games, Whistler, the Braves have only scored him 10 runs, Gary, and he's still 3 and 1. Made his major league debut against the Mets here last June and allowed just one run over eight innings and got a victory. Meanwhile, the Braves were slow getting out of the field because the home plate umpire Jordan Baker and uh, the third base umpire Mike Everett both disappeared between innings. And we're short one right now. Well, they just like. they just both came out. So I think we have a full okay. We're fine. Yeah, we're fine. Now. Yep. But I'm I don't know what transpired there, but the Braves took a full 90 seconds to two minutes before anybody came out of the dugout. So. Uh, now we have a full complement of Braves and a full complement of Blue. And uh, Jordan Baker just tapped his chest and said, That's on me. So, whatever it was, hopefully all is resolved. He's a youngster. Yes, he is. 
A couple of young umpires on this crew. Jordan Baker, the home plate umpire. Ryan Blakeney, the second base umpire, both relatively young. Well, one thing I'll say about the umpires today uh, is that a lot of them are in better shape. There were a lot of rotund umpires in our day. They were good umpires, but rotund. Here's Michael Conforto, who takes ball one. Speaking of rotund, Bartolo Colon is away from the team tonight. He is attending his son's high school graduation in New Jersey, but he will be back in time to make his start on Sunday. Bruce Thumb and all. I thought that that ball hit the meat of in the inside palm side of his thumb, Gary, on his on the on the fleshy part, the base. It was very fortunate. Whistler walked two in the first inning, falls behind the struggling Conforto 3 0. Conforto does have three hits and eight career at bats against Whistler, which may contribute to him being careful. Travis Darno on deck. And he walks him on four pitches. So three of the last four batters have walked against Whistler, who had walked only 22 in 83 innings coming in. He's up with his pitches. And now this is a, a lineup that is uh, seven out of the eight regulars are going to be batting from the left side of the play. As a matter of fact, here's your only right hand hitter up right now, Travis Darno. He and Matt Harvey, the only right hand batter right, of yep. the regulars. Yep. Never count the pitchers, Gary. As well, to, don't tell Ron that. On though. this staff, you know, they they sometimes hit. Just the second game back for Travis since his stint on the DL, and he takes up and in for ball one. His brother wow. Chase is not in the lineup tonight, and Krasinski's going to walk that ball out to Whistler, who's missed with five in a row and missed badly on that one. So Chase and and Travis have still never started in the same major league game. Last fall. Chase Darno was with the Phillies and he started one game, but Travis didn't start that game. Chase did have a couple of pinch hitting appearances with Travis behind the plate. And there's a fastball strike. I asked Travis what what's going to happen when when you're catching and Chase comes to bat when you guys finally get to play against each other and he said well Chase will probably be singing. <laughs> Chase mm -hmm. Darno very famously is is a musician in his non baseball time. All right. Well, what will Travis be doing. Probably <laughs> listening. Chase is the older brother after all. You know those older brothers. I do. I got a good one. I'm lucky. He didn't sing, did he? No. Gary let me get away with more stuff. Did you guys ever play against each other? No. Or was he too old for that? No, same team. A couple years. It was too old, but we were always on the same team. Juan was the coach. He drafted us. You know that. Yeah. In the air to center field. Inciarte drifting back. He's got it lined up. And Darno retired for the first down. So if you were both first basemen, how I played play the outfield. Oh, if I played center, because you were the younger, I, I scampered around that patrol in that center field. Really, I could run when I was a kid. I was quick. Wheels. I was quick. I was, you know, deceptively fast out there in my twenties. See, we didn't get to see you till. A no bit one knows me. I played with Ozzy Smith, and Willie McGee. Right. All those speed burners. Well, you were playing on AstroTurf too. Probably enhanced your blazing speed. I hated it when they had the cutouts and uh, just around the bases on turf. Oh, was it murder? Here's Alejandro De Aza playing center field tonight with Cespedes out of the lineup. It has really been a rough go for De Aza, who is hitless in his last 20 at bats. Yeah, it's been a tough slog for him, and um, he doesn't get a lot of playing time. Terry's tried to get him in there to get him going, and just hasn't happened. He hits this one toward the gap in right center and that's going to be down for an extra base hit. Digging for third is Conforto. He's going to get the green light. Conforto heads home. No relay throw. It's an RBI double for Alejandro Deaza and the Mets are out to a one nothing lead. So Deaza snaps that over 20 with a ringing two base hit. Got to feel good for Deaza to break that over and contribute. 
He's been around a long time here. Likes the ball down, right down the pipe. So Whistler, who was able to work around a couple of walks in the first, pays for a leadoff walk here in the second. And now Matt Harvey will bat. Matt two for 17 at the plate this year. Deaza at second and one out. And he lines one right at Peterson. And he picks off the soft liner for the second out. Off the end of the bat. So two out. Now Granderson rounded out into the shift his first time up. And been a struggle for Curtis this year. 221. I can't be happy with his first half. The 13 home runs is incredible. And his leadoff home runs are off the charts, but he struggled with men on base, Scare. Well, 111 with runners in scoring position is almost incomprehensible for Curtis. Five for 45 to be exact, and not pointing a finger at Curtis. It's just you just battling through it here. It's been a three month slog for him. Well it's led to the very strange juxtaposition of his home run and RBI numbers. I don't think I've ever seen anybody at this point in the season with 13 home right. runs and 21 RBI's. Right. That's that's hard to do. Well. No the there's as a team are dead last in the major no. leagues in runners in scoring position. Big shift on Curtis as we always see on the right side of the infield. And Curtis pops one up into shallow right. And Marquez waits for it. That retires the side, but not before Alejandro Deaza breaks out of a slump with an RBI double and gives Matt Harvey and the Mets a 1 nothing lead in the second. On Atlanta much longer this trip and one more and then the Braves move to their new ballpark up in the northwest suburbs Adonis Garcia leads off in the home second Garcia hasn't started in a week because of an ankle problem. He's pinch hit a couple of times over that stretch. Thirty one year old from Cuba hitting 258 and Harvey gets a slider in for a strike one and one. No Garcia they tried him in left field the last time we were here. Uh, they tried him in left field. They had four games in left field because it was defensive play at third. His defense has actually gotten a little better at third base, but I don't think he's ever going to be a gifted defensive no. player. They were hoping he'd come in here and hit for power. And well, 
He hit 10 home runs last year in just 58 games, but he's not only three home runs this year. He's only driven in 14 runs, Gary. He has, however, hit against the Mets 405. If you combine his performances last year and this year. Garcia, then A.J. Brzezinski and Eric Ibar for the Braves in the home second. And Garcia oh. takes a fastball for strike three call. So Harvey has his first strike out of the night. Looking for a breaking ball here. Guess splits the plate. So one out and nobody on. Now uh, the oldest catcher in baseball, A.J. Pruszynski, who had a wonderful season last year at age 38, not so good this year at age 39. No home runs. The Braves are last in home runs in the National League, and by a wide margin. Yes, they are. 33 to be exact is what they've hit. They're last in runs scored, last in slugging percentage. They're not an offensive juggernaut. Harvey paints the outside at 96, a ball and a strike. That gave up a couple of hits in the first inning. Helped himself out with a pickoff. Eric Ibar waits on deck. At the Quicken Loans Rocket Arms. That's at the second best strikeout to walk ratio in the major leagues, best in the National League, led by Noah Syndergaard. Breaking ball lifted foul down the left field side. Conforto goes over, but it's out of play. It's amazing that the Dodgers don't lead that stat just on Kershaw's performance alone. Yeah. What do you, is it seven walks and 141 strikeouts right now? Well, how about throw Cincinnati into that mix? <laughs> they they got the their last in strikeouts and with the least amount and the most walks. 312 walks Cincinnati. It's pitching staff. 499 strikeouts. That's that's wow. a bad combination. Wow. Two and two to Pierzynski. And he hits it in the air deep to center. Back goes Deaza to the warning track. He's got room. And he runs it down. So Pierzynski, who was homerless this year, makes a bid and comes up a few feet shy. Two out. Fastball. That's a little bit. That's probably the best bolt that Brzezinski's got right there in the deep part of the ballpark. You know, you mentioned how much this is a pitcher's park, and it is. And the Braves at home this year have hit only 16 home runs in 30, 36 games. 16 home runs. And Freddie Freeman has half of those. So nobody for the Braves is chipping in with any power at home, which I guess. Leads to that 9 and 27 record. No. Well, Freddie's the only guy in double digits, right? 12? Yeah, I mean, nobody else in the lineup Just tonight has more than three. No one has outside of him. The closest one to him, Gary, is Tyler Flowers, the backup catcher with right. four. Mm -hmm. Ibar chops one toward the hole, past oh. Walker. And Ibar has a base hit. Talk about a seeing eye dog right there. That is a Baltimore chop playing Ibar up the middle. Just out of the reach of Walker. Ibar has had a dreadful first year in the National League. Has done a little bit better since coming back from the disabled list, and he has himself a base hit there. Third hit against Harvey, all singles, and now Emilio Bonifacio will come to bat. Bonifacio has been with eight different teams. And like so many others, it seems, with the Braves this year, he's on his second tour of duty with Atlanta. Played with them two years ago. He was with the White Sox last year. 
Spent most of this season in the minor leagues. He was hitting 270 in Triple A. Called up Tuesday when Malik Smith went on the disabled list. It's a shame about Smith. He took that pitch from Antonio Bastardo off his left thumb. Thumb was broken, and he'll be out eight to ten weeks. It's hard to believe Bonifacio came up with Arizona back in 2007. Mm -hmm. Chopper toward the middle, oh. and Walker can't get that one. Ibar going first to third, and he'll make it without a throw. So a couple of base hits that Walker just couldn't get to, one to his left and one to his right. Well, a couple. Another Baltimore chop. So he's hit him in the right place. Both just out of the reach of Walker, one to the left, and this one to the right. So runners at the corners with two out, and now Harvey will face the opposing pitcher, Whistler, who's just one for 25 this year and five for 54 in his career. 13 strikeouts with that 25 at bats. Johnson creeps in from third in case Whistler has an idea about trying to bunt for a hit to get that run in. And Harvey misses with a sinker, ball one. So back to back two out hits by the seven and eight hitters making Matt work a little harder here in the second trying to protect a one nothing lead. Ibar at third Bonifacio who can steal a base at first. But you're certainly not expecting him to steal with the pitcher up. Now it's two and oh. Whistler figures he'll take a rip at a 2 0 fastball, but he comes up empty. And that one's right at Walker, down to a knee to make sure, and that retires the side. A couple of hits, and the Braves leave two. After two, one nothing New York.
On the Braves one to nothing as Drupal Cabrera leading off the inning for the Mets and Cabrera in the midst right now of a power surge has homers in two straight games six in the last 26 after just two home runs in his first 44 games this year. So you think to yourself well he has to be doing something a little bit differently right now but speaking with Cabrera speaking with Terry Collins speaking with Kevin Long they all say that he looks exactly the same at the plate. It's one of those stretches where sometimes it's just baseball being baseball and, and luck plays into things a little bit and the numbers kind of bear that out if you go deeper five of his eight home runs has actually been with two strikes counts that Cabrera is not necessarily looking to drive the ball and even the counts where it's less than two strikes like the other day two days ago a 1 1 count he hit a curveball the opposite way over the fence so right now Cabrera not know not knowing exactly how he's doing it but he's not fighting it either. Oh he did hit that breaking ball it was a curveball on the outer half of the plate. The opposite field home run from the left side of the plate that was very impressive. And um, you know you just keep plugging. I mean oh, I'm glad no one's taking credit for the power surge. It's just he's doing it. He's by change. This one's it out to left field and retreating is Bonifacio near the wall and he can't make the catch. And into second base goes Cabrera as dribble didn't appear to hit the ball that well but he got it to the fence and Bonifacio trying to make a leaping grab against the the scoreboard but comes up empty and it's a double for Cabrera. I thought Bonifacio kind of drifted here a little bit and remember that foul long foul ball that off the bat of Persinski in the first and the second inning. Uh, that carried deep down the left field line, so it seems like maybe the ball is going to be carrying the left field. So Cabrera, who hit a home run that way a couple of days ago, batting left-handed, got this one right near the top of the fence. And Bonifacio nearly reeled it in, but Cabrera has himself his 15th double of the year. And James Loney at the plate, and he drives one to center field, chasing Inciarte back, but he's there. Tagging at second is Cabrera. Inciarte's throw is on target, but a shade too late, and Cabrera arrives safely. Good base running by his dribble to get to third base. Well, you initially go halfway. If you're not sure, then once you get a read that it's going to be caught, you get back to the bag and tag up. Well done. We know we talked earlier about Cabrera. He knows how to play the game. So that gets a runner to third with one out and a chance for Neil Walker to drive him in. They're going to bring the infield in. It looks like right now, Gare, we're a little early in the ball game. I guess with a team that is last in runs scored. Are they? Uh, they're going to appeal, I think, that yes. Cabrera left early. I don't think he did. And indeed, second base umpire Ryan Blakeney says he did not. So they're going to move the infield, keep the infield in. And try to cut off the run here. Well, they're already down one nothing. Their offense doesn't score a whole lot of runs, so they'll try and choke off the run at the plate. Walker walked his first time up, trying to snap an 0 for 15 stretch. You never used to see this back when I played. It always can see a run in early in the ball game. I don't think he left early. Nope, he's still on it. Proper call. Reason we knew that is because Bill Webb had already shown us that. Our crack director. You say cracked? Crack. Oh, oh. like you know, number one. The man with so many Emmys that he uh, uses oh. them for doorstoppers. That guy? Yeah. Okay. Two and out of Walker. Pain with Kelly it. Johnson on deck. Pain in the neck, but he's good. Got to get this run in. Mets have not been good at this. And Walker has struggled more than anybody. How's that one at the plate? It's two and two. Yeah, he's been he's pulling off here. You got a sinker ball pitcher out there, and we've all been there, all of us hitters, and I can relate. Then you got a sinker ball pitcher. You just want to go up the middle. You don't want to try to pull. And he pulled off that sinker away, down and away. Walker is just three for ten this year, getting a runner in from third with less than two out. 
Whistler in a spot where he could use a strikeout is yet to strike out a batter tonight. Cabrera third and one away. Walker stays alive. The Mets as a team have converted only 46 percent getting a runner in from third which is well below the league average with less than two outs. Yeah. Two two from Whistler and that's popped up in a shallow left Cabrera will tag Bonifacio under it drifts on it and here comes Cabrera the throw by Bonifacio not in time and Cabrera scores on the sacrifice fly not well done by Bonifacio but very good base running by Cabrera to get home and it's two nothing New York he hit to the right outfielder that's for sure. Inciarte has a good arm Bonifacio throwing a hand grenade there. So well done. Caught it on the wrong side of his body. It's a high fly ball. He's not coming home for momentum going home. Everything done improperly. Well, Bonifacio is a jack of all trades. He started out as an infielder. Kelly Johnson pops one up on the infield. And Ibar calling for it. Back pedals and stays with it to end the inning. But the leadoff double by Cabrera, and he finds his way around on a couple of fly balls. 2 0 New York in the third. Well, if you're in Atlanta and you have some hankering for some greasy food, the varsity is the place to go. And uh, she'll take your order if, if you dare. Don't be late. Jace Peterson had a base hit to right center his first time up, then promptly got picked off first base by Matt Harvey. And Peterson fouls it off, and it's 0 2. Stop by your local McDonald's today to pick up an exclusive Mets ticket offer. Offer is valid through the end of the regular season, excluding July 30th and the Subway Series games. Seats based on availability while supplies last. For more information, visit Mets.com slash McDonald's. Peterson slugs one out to center, chasing Diaz back to the track. Back at the wall, he makes the catch. Nice play, Alejandro Diaz. He got a great jump on that going back. And robs Peterson of an extra base hit. Well, Matt Harvey has given up four base hits. A couple C and I dogs, but hits, this is a hard hit ball. Nice play. It's a leadoff double easily. 
Jazz are not really a center fielder too. He's basically a corner outfielder. Makes a nice play here. Uh, Deaza, who has really struggled in all facets of his game, has been a big contributor already tonight. Drove and run with a double, and now that one saved a double. Here's Ender Inciarte, who had a base hit his first time, and he takes low for ball one. Inciarte now three for seven in his career against Harvey. He came over from Arizona in the trade for Shelby Miller, which could turn out to be just a fabulous trade for the Braves. They got Aaron Blair, who is getting his feet wet in the Braves rotation, and most importantly, they got Dansby Swanson, who had been the first pick in the draft, who is uh, playing at Double A, the shortstop. The Braves have two young shortstops: Swanson at Double A and Ozzie Albies, the 19-year-old, who's at Triple A. They like them both. In the air to right, Anderson started back, now comes in. And that retires in Ciarte two away. Speaking of prospect shortstops, the Mets just promoted their best prospect shortstop, Ahmed Rosario, from St. Lucie up to Double A Binghamton. He had been tearing up the Florida State League, just 20 years old. Up the food chain. 20 years old. You don't want to move him up too quick. And the Mets' former number one draft pick, Gavin Cicchini, also shortstop, has been playing well in AAA. Nothing in one to Freeman. So, uh, shortstop prospects galore on their way in the National League East. Freeman flat out to left his first time and fouls back the fastball. Nothing in two. Do we know what gear that was? Well, no, it's more the clutch is in and you're just revving it. It was very rumbly. Hmm. Raymond reaches for it and fouls it off. Matt gave up two hits in each of the first two innings, but was able to work around them. Looking for a 1 2 3 third ahead on Freeman 0 and 2. Check swing on the slider. Did he go? No swing. Mike Everett with the call 1 and 2. Braves came from Miami where they split a two game series. The Marlins stayed home. They're playing the Cubs this weekend. Mm. Freeman strikes out on the slider, and Harvey has his second strike out of the night. First one two three inning for Matt helped out by Alejandro Deaza going back to get it after three two nothing New York.
Tri-State Audi dealers. Michael Conforto leads off the fourth inning against Matt Whistler. Mets with a two-nothing lead. Conforto walked and scored the first Met run in the second. Michael has eight hits in his last 70 at bats. Pulls that one into the shift. It comes up for Peterson, and that's the first out. Well, to me, there's the way Conforto can hit using all the field. There, there shouldn't be a team in the National League that puts the shift on for him. He's got with the 10 home runs and he's pulled a little bit too much. He's hit balls hard at people, but you don't use the left center field. I wouldn't want the right side of the infield stacked with 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 three infielders. So when you watch him pulling too much as Darnell pops one straight up and Pierzynski sheds the mask and stays with it for the second out when you see Conforto pulling too much is that a matter of the way they're pitching him or is that his approach at the plate. Uh, Gary hasn't really played that much they pitched him very tough they throw him a lot of breaking balls had trouble with the breaking ball. I'm not so concerned about him pulling too much as I think that he's dropping that back shoulder and he's under a lot of balls where in spring training he just stayed Paris shoulder stayed parallel to the ground and he's hitting line drives all over the place. Now he's getting the ball away but he drops his back shoulder. He's fouling it back on a pitch he should be out of the box and allowing the pitcher to make another tough pitch on him. You know if you're on the pitcher gets that pitch him out over the plate you rip it and they, you're, you, don't, you don't give him a chance to come back and make a tough pitch at you. So you know it's a it's a learning experience for him. I'm sure he's not happy hitting 227 coming into this game. But when you see a kid like this who's got such a nice yep. all field stroke and hit a lot of opposite field home runs last year is when you see him drop his shoulder like that does it make you suspect that he's trying just to yank home runs is that. Is that what seems to be going on. Well you have to drop your back shoulder on a low pitch you know you, do, you can't swing level on a knee high fast a knee high pitch or mid thigh. But the pitch above the belt and there's strike three right there Gary that's the one you got to stay level on as Bonifacio strikes out. I mean sorry Diaz you got to stay level on the pitch up so you know. I got sent down. I struggled. Everybody said I had a nice swing. It didn't work out for me right off the bat. Still 2 nothing Mets going to the bottom of the fourth. Atlanta 
pretty good likeness. Yeah. And Nick leads off for the Braves in the home fourth and takes a strike. But they showed the one they're going to have a Piazza bobblehead at, at City Field, right? Or did they have it already? They had a thing up on the scoreboard, and, I, and I, it looked just like Mike. I like the Jesse Orozco bobblehead where he's down on his knees. Yeah, that's a classic. The air. <laughs> it's a classic pose. You think he planned it? I don't think so. I think, gosh, how could you plan it? Arcakis lines one the other way. Conforto will have to play it on the hop and banks away from him. Backed up by Deaza. Arcakis trying for second, and the throw is backed up by Harvey. And Marquecas winds up at second base. It'll be a base hit and then probably an error on Conforto. Should be. He's got a chance to stay, to catch the ball, and he backs up and didn't get in front. Well, they're going to score this a double, but that's very really? generous for Marquecas. Wow. His 18th double of the year. That That's the thing. I mean, Conforto just got too close to it. That's how it winds up being a double. Anyway. It's the first extra base hit for the Braves tonight. Their fifth hit against Harvey. And now Adonis Garcia, who went down looking his first time up. Well, that uh, that's something that did not happen in Matt's first three seasons in the big leagues. He handles the comeback or looks Mark Kakis back and gets the out on Garcia. Well, that's a big out for Matt right there. The runner not advancing. When I mean, you're a team that pretty much stinks offensively, you got to do the little things to get some runs up there. You got to get that runner advanced. Harvey gets the first down. Now A.J. Przinski, who hit one deep to center field that Deaza ran down. Playing Przinski way deep on the right side of the infield. Got Walker way in the outfield. Przinski doesn't run. Przinski doesn't run well, as well as Cabrera at shortstop up the middle. Line into center field, a base hit for Pierzynski, charged by Deaza. They're sending Markakis. The throw coming in, not in time. Pierzynski with an RBI single to cut the Mets' lead to two to one. I'll tell you what, Pierzynski is a little pesky little hitter. He has done some damage this season, hitting in the clutch against the Mets. Fastball away, goes right with it. Bell tie. Piazza comes in, does everything right, but it doesn't have a really great arm. It's offline, it dies. Well, Pierzynski now seven hits and 11 career at bats against Matt Harvey. And he drives in the first Atlanta run. Six hits now against Matt in three and a third innings. And here's Ibar who had one of them. Mm. And he skips over the top of that as. It's a nice Darno play by Darno. Takes it out of the dirt. Nice play by Darno. A hard slider down and in. Nice backhand. Ibar snuck his base hit through the hole on the right side. Harvey's already picked off a base runner. Pierzynski is certainly not expecting the hard pickoff throw. Well, the middle innings have been the kryptonite for Harvey. Been effective early in games, not so much in the middle of games. Johnson out on the grass at third against Ibar, who takes it up and away, and it's 2 0. Johnson in at the corner. My bar is a pretty good bunner. Got good speed. Oh. 
Eric Ibar spent 10 years with the Angels, an All Star season two years ago. But things did not go well early in the season for him, although his offense has picked up since he came back from the disabled list. He was out with a foot injury. Now he was traded for Angleton Simmons just got back. And doing his usual defensive wizardry for a bad team in Anaheim. Where the Angels are such a huge disappointment. Yes, they are. I'm just wondering how much longer are they going to stick with uh, Sosia as a manager? They haven't uh, had good seasons now for a while. Ten games under 500 with the best player in baseball. Two and two to Ibar, and it's up and away. Meanwhile, the first place team in that division, Texas, they've got a 10 game lead now, but they're now down 60% of their rotation. Derek Holland, Colby Lewis, join you, Darvish, on the disabled list. Cole Hamill's having a wonderful year yes, for them. Oh, wow. Got the win last night. I'm very happy in Arlington. 3 2. That is in there for a call strike three. Got him looking at the slider. Third strikeout for Harvey and a big second out. Borderline high, but that's a strike. Nicely framed by the very crafty Darno. We haven't seen him in a long time. I forgot how well he. Moves his wrist and moves his glove at the last moment when he catches a ball to get that strike. It's been a while since he's been back there. So, two out. Pierzynski is still at first. Here's Bonifacio, snuck one up the middle for a base at his first time. And he takes a changeup for a strike. Say that Matt is picture perfect. He's erratic with his pitches, up with his breaking balls. It's a warm night, but not overly hot. We'll see how that affects Matt's stamina. Matt's haven't played in a lot of hot weather yet this year. It's a curveball that misses two and one. This is a warm weather sport. You know, I think you feel looser when you're when it's hot and you got a good sweat going. Yeah, I think it gets you. It gets you loose, but the question is, does it sap you at the end? Well, he's 6'4", 217 pounds. He's a big horse, let me tell you. Defacio lines it foul, two and two. So he's thrown 62 pitches. Gary, 42 strikes, 20 balls. He's also had some balls hit rather hard against him that have turned into outs. 2 2 coming. Lifted down the left field line. Conforto races over near the sidewall and he makes a great catch. And he might have knocked the wind out of himself as he hit that wall. Nice. And he comes up limping. Terrific play by Conforto, but at what cost? Might have hit his knee. Yes. Well. Conforto with a really terrific play with that sidewall bearing down on him and the assistant athletic trainer Brian Chicklow will walk him back. We'll check him out when we come back.
play by Michael Conforto, but you can see he goes left knee first into right. that wall. There's a lot of padding there, but when you go in there hard like that, you can see. I'm sure he'll be okay, but that hurt a little bit. That's for sure. Well, you hope it's just uh, just a little bruise, but he got a lot of attention when he came back to the dugout. And we'll see whether he can stay in the game. Meanwhile, Matt Harvey will lead off for the Mets in the fifth inning with the Mets up two to one. Harvey had a soft line drive to the second baseman his first time up. Matt Whistler coming off his first one-two-three inning of the night in the fourth. Granderson and Cabrera to follow. And Harvey hits slow grounder to short for Ibar. One away. Wow. A little violent. Did he create that I tear or was that there know. already? I mean, let's face it, they're moving out of this ballpark at the end they're of the season. Yes. They may not be doing all the maintenance that they might right. otherwise. Precisely. Booth is looking a little shabby too, you know. Elementary, my dear Watson. <laughs> Here's Granderson is 0 for 2, grounded out and flight out. Mets have had only two hits tonight, but they've made him count. RBI doubled by Deaza after a walk to Conforto in the second. Then Cabrera doubled and came around on a couple of fly balls in the third. That's been it. Meanwhile, Whistler has walked three and struck out only one. 23 year old from Ohio who has had a great ability to beat this ball club as Granderson thinks about a bunt with the shift on. Garcia alone on the left side and playing back. And Granderson thought about dropping one down. And Garcia is not buying it. He's staying back. Whistler falls behind Granderson three and one. Giancarlo Stanton homered for the Marlins. They've tied up the Cubs one one in the fifth. That's off Lester, right? Yep. That's lined up the middle. A base hit for Granderson. So Curtis has the Mets' third hit of the game. A one out single. Did not have. Well, yes, they did. Sorry. Get them where they ain't. Even when they shift, nothing changes. You think we Willie Killer saw shifts when he said hit them where they ain't? Where they ain't? I don't know. Back in the 1890s, I bet not. Here's that Struble Cabrera, who hit a long double to left, and then scored a run in the third. That runs the difference in the game right now. Whistler steps off and looks Granderson back. It's not done much running this year, just one stolen base. And Cabrera mm. pops one up into shallow center. In Ciarte and under it. Two out. Mets welcome Dead and Company to City Field Saturday and Sunday. That's this Saturday and Sunday. Original Grateful Dead members are united with an all-star cast, including John Mayer. For tickets, visit Mets.com slash Dead and Company. Well, we're not working Saturday. No, it's the concert is when the team's on the road. Right. Well, you're saying well, we, fly home. We can fly home for it, but I'm not a deadhead. You know, if Jerry were still alive. Would you do it? Would you think about that it? That might be different. <laughs> Get the 6 a.m. flight to Atlanta in the morning. I mean, I love Bob Weir, but not enough to fly home. Chaloni <laughs> <laughs> takes outside. But if you're in the New York area, by all means. Definitely. Now, I wonder if do longtime deadheads still follow Dead and Company? I would think so. I would definitely think so. Defense there, shift on the right side. I mean, will Bill Walton be there? Well, basketball's over. I mean, has a great allegiance with the wandering hordes. The finest final 
game in an NCAA championship game I ever witnessed was Bill Walton against uh, Memphis. Memphis, uh, Doctor Larry Kenyon was the mm -hmm. was the other uh, opposing senator. Uh, senator, center. Loney pulls one past the glove of Peterson. Base hit. Granderson will go first to third. And Loney is aboard. So Loney in the number three spot in the batting order tonight on base for the second time. And the Mets have runners at the corners with two out. Well, you can see the shift here on the right side of the infield. They opted not to play, surprisingly, deeper with the second baseman, Jace Peterson, more in the outfield. That's a great point, Keith. Because there was two, two outs. With two out, why yeah. wouldn't you play? Well, why would they, they did it earlier, and they might would have had a play in that. I ball. mean, if it's one out and the double plays in order, it's one Correct. thing. But with two out and Loney's lack of speed, very uh, surprising. You're absolutely right. That didn't make much sense at all. So now first and third and two out for Walker, who's walked and delivered a sacrifice fly. Still trying to snap that 0 for 15 skid. And Neil pulls one into right field for a base hit. That brings in Granderson. Loney will go to third. And Walker snaps the 0 for 15 with a 30. He drives in a run to make it 3 to 1 New York. Well, two out RBI, too. The toughest ones to get. 29th, uh, 20, 30th RBI on the season. Second tonight. And Whistler has just making too many pitches. His ball sinking over the middle of the plate, not getting it on the corners. And this left hand hitting lineup of the Mets, I think it's just chipping away. And they're scoring runs out the home run, Gary. Seven left hand hitters tonight. Here's Kelly Johnson, who takes a curveball for a strike. Kelly is hit into a force play and popped up 0 for 2. So the Mets bunching three hits here in the fifth inning to score a run. A two out run, which the Mets had four of yesterday. Mets have the third fewest two out runs. I think they also have the third fewest runs. So that stands yeah. to reason. Hmm. Up to foul. One and two to Kelly. So Whistler is a sinker ball pitcher and he's up with his fastball, and that's not good for a sinker ball pitcher. Loney at third, Walker at first with two down, and Michael Conforto is out on deck. That's good news after banging his knee in the last half inning. That's pulled over the bag and just foul. Mm. That's trouble right there. That's a game breaker right there. Clearly fell. Tim Timmons, the first base umpire, first making sure he gets out of the way and then making the call. Making like Fred Asparagus over there. <laughs> Looks like Peter Cottontail. <laughs> nice little funny hop. One two coming. And Kelly pops it up into shallow right center. And Ciarte will take charge of it. And that retires the side. But Neil Walker with a two out RBI hit. Expands the Mets lead halfway through its three to one New York.
Matt Whistler leads off for the Braves and takes a strike for Matt Harvey. Michael Conforto in his spot in left field. So none the worse after banging his knee, making that catch against the sidewall in the last inning. That's have been doing a lot of breath holding the last couple of days, right? Cespedes and Syndergaard and Wheeler and Cologne. Even Matt's his could, last start had a little elbow issue. Can you imagine if those if they was all turned out in the on the DL? Oh my gosh. Well, one thing's for certain, this next time through the rotation, Dan Worthen and Terry Collins are gonna have to be keeping a close eye on their starters, right? Matt's tomorrow night after he complained of a little elbow tenderness. Then uh, Cologne on Sunday coming off the bruised thumb. And then Syndergaard on Monday after he had some elbow questions. Mm -hmm. You're more concerned with Matt's uh, and Syndergaard. Uh, you know that Cologne's a veteran. And it's just a bruise in his thumb. It's whether it's going to affect his command. That's what I'll be looking for on Sunday. Well, Tapper back to Harvey. One out. Well, for the moment, because the Mets are concerned about their starters, they're carrying an extra arm in the bullpen. Catch a flight to 2017 spring training with Delta Airlines and Delta Dugout. Visit SNY.TV slash Delta Dugout for details. Mets are carrying eight relievers right now, including Logan Verrett, who was called up yesterday, and Sean Gilmartin, who was called up earlier in the week. So the Mets have a four-man bench, right. and with Cespedes, Terry trying to stay away from him tonight, it really means they have a three-man bench. Line to center field. Deaza coming on to make the catch. Another good break by Deaza. Good first step. And after he robbed Peterson going back the last time, he makes a nice play on Peterson coming in this time. Ball hit hard. Great jump. It's all about getting there. Once you get there, you're going to make the catch. They're big league players. So great jump. Deaza had himself a nice night at the plate and in the field. Now two out and nobody on for Ender Inciarte. It was one for two, single to right in the first. Taking all the way. Ball one. Matt seems to have settled in a little bit this inning, Gary. A little better inning. That run, a little two run bulge, has kind of got him in the groove. Left it to left. Conforto eases back. And that retires the side. A 1 2 3 inning for Harvey. It took him just nine pitches. 3 1 Mets after 5.
Alvis homered and drove in five not pictured in the Phillies win. Joe Panic had a three run triple not pictured in the Giants win. And Xander Bogarts had the walk off hit for the Red Sox as they avoided a four game sweep against the White Sox. Pictured. Michael Conforto leads off in the sixth and takes a curveball strike from Matt Whistler, a ball and a strike. Conforto walked and scored in the second, grounded out in the fourth. Three infielders on the right side again against Conforto. Mm. There's the breaking ball that he's been fishing at Gary too much. He's got to learn. And that's over anxious. It's not a strike. He has a terrific eye at the plate. He showed us in spring training. He showed us last year. And it's just that 227 is making him a little over anxious. He chops this one. Ibar comes in to get it. One out. Let's check in with the studio. Larry Ridley has a game break brought to you by your local Honda dealers. It is amazing that the Marlins have done as well as they have. They're four games over 500, four and a half out of first place, with Stanton really not having no. gotten it going. Stanton, everybody else, I mean, Barry Bonds, a new hitting coach, first year there in Miami, back in uniform. Ozuna's having himself a nice year. Yelich. Ozuna just really, he clicked with Ozuna, got Ozuna going the other way, using the opposite field. Slider by Whistler to get out on Darno 0 and 2. So that's 14 home runs for Stanton. He's hitting what about 210. If he gets going, the team's yep. got a chance to stay around. It's like Dave Kingman numbers, right? You know, 214, 30 home runs plus. Stanton gives you a little better defense. <laughs> Darno 0 for 5 since coming off the disabled list. And he flies this one out to center and Ciarte back. Two out. Well, I was going to say, I thought I kind of thought that this was going to happen, that the Mets weren't going to be able to hit, rely on the home run in this ballpark. And here they are, they're chipping away all three runs via base hits. Sacrifice fly. A double and a two out base hit. The Oza drove in the first run with a double in the second, chasing Conforto home from first. So tonight, De Aza has snapped an 0 for 20 stretch with an RBI double, and Walker has stopped an 0 for 15 with an RBI single. So they've broken their offers with hits of consequence. And they win tonight. We don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves. But with Washington off, they will close to three games, two back in the loss column. That's we're in Milwaukee tomorrow. Now that's to me, that's not a good play. You got the pitcher on deck, two out, and you're bunting for a hit. Well, if you can Move the order and get the pitcher up. Great. Uh, I mean, Diaz has gotten a big hit in this ball game. He hasn't done much this year. The double got the Mets on the board in the second. So you're cool with that? I'm okay with it. Okay. He's hitting 300, 280. He's. I don't want him doing that. I mean, Diaz is capable of hitting the ball out of the ballpark. Has it as many as 17 home runs in a season? He said just one this year. It's 17 for the White Sox three years ago. Fouls off the breaking ball. So it's interesting to watch young Matt Whistler in this game, who really doesn't have good command. He's the kind of pitcher that needs to have command, <clears throat> and he's battling through it here. You know, he's going to get given up three runs. Not his best stuff, but this is where you watch your pitchers and see how they react when they don't have it all going. And when it kicks off the shin guard of Pierzynski. Well, the last time the Mets faced Whistler in early May, he was also matched up against Harvey that day, and he allowed just one hit over eight scoreless innings. So he hasn't been quite as sharp tonight, but still looks like a 
very important piece of the future for the Braves as they rebuild this team. He's 23 years old in his second big league season. Deaza strokes that to nice. right field, and that's down for a base hit. So Deaza has his second hit of the day, a two out single. Breaking ball out over the plate. They want it down and in. He leads it out over the middle, outer half, gets it down. But Diaz stays back. Let's go with one hand. Nicely done. It's been hard to come by for him. So now Harvey, who's hit a soft line drive and grounded out 0 for 2. And Matt flares one on the right side. Peterson has got it, and that retires the side. Middle of the sixth in Atlanta, 3 to 1, New York. Sunday, Eric Coleman sits down with Jet Safety Marcus Gilchrist. Find out why he had to make some adjustments playing with Revis. Plus, if Wilkerson holds out during camp, who will take his place? On Jets Nation, Sunday at 7, only on SNY. Let's answer our Verizon trivia question. Or let's ask the question. That's probably what we should do first. The Braves single season record for most home runs. There it's he not, is. It's not him. He plays for the Mets. Freddie Freeman foul tips the first pitch from Matt Harvey as we start at the bottom of the sixth. Just so you know, it's not Hank Aaron, who never hit 50 in a season. Right. You're all right about that. It's actually, despite the brave storied history of home run hitters, was a guy who played in this ballpark, Turner Field. Freeman takes one the other way, but right at Conforto, and that's the first down. Well, Freddie just—he is in a groove right now where he's hitting it hard every time he makes yes. contact. And as you mentioned earlier, what a difference <laughs> compared to earlier this season. He looked awful. And I got to wonder if it was a mental funk that oh my gosh this team has been broken up and we came up with some competitive brave teams and let it get the best of them and uh, you finally look yourself in the mirror you tell yourself hey <laughs> it's, you're going to go down with the ship and it's going to be a miserable year you better get your act together. Mark 
Kakis takes a strike. He doubled and scored in the fourth inning. And you know we talked about it earlier. You know when, when you're on a team that gets off to a terrible start and the manager gets fired, sometimes that's a wake up call for yes. everybody. Mm -hmm. I mean nobody <clears throat> wants to feel responsible for costing somebody their job. Right. Well, the players, if they, you know, they, they like your manager. Even I played for manager I didn't like and didn't care for. Didn't dislike, but didn't care for. That should be a base hit. And Marquez sneaks one up the middle for his second hit of the night. And when he eventually got fired, you know, I felt bad. You know, I wasn't sorry to see him go, but you know, you. By all accounts, everybody loved Freddy Gonzalez. Yes. He was a, a really well liked figure in that clubhouse, but you know, at 9 and 28, they decided to make the, the change, even though the, the expectations here in Atlanta this year Are, were extremely right. low. I mean, this is a team that clearly is building for the future. Donis Garcia has struck out at a comeback or 0 for 2 in his first game back in the lineup after a week sitting out with an ankle injury. Matt's doing a good job tonight as far as holding runners on. And the Mets have been taken advantage of and have kind of fallen asleep, but they're slowly the starting pitching is starting to get more aware that they got to hold runners close because they're going to try to steal. Just off the corner, one and one. The Mets have given up more stolen bases than any team in the National League. The juxtaposition between the number the Mets have given up and the paltry number they've stolen themselves is a little alarming. A little tapper. Harvey will have to go to first with it. And a high throw, but Loney stays on the bag, and that's the second out as Marcakis moves to second. Two hands on the fielding. Just didn't. Yeah, that's a good throw right there, right in the money. So two out to runner in scoring position for AJ Pierzynski, who drove in the only run. Fastball away, Gary. So let's see if Matt changes it up and comes in to Pierzynski. Remember, he hit it well out to left center his first time up, or right center, that uh, Deaza ran down. Krasinski with great career numbers against Harvey who starts him this time with a curveball inside. Krasinski with that base hit last time up now seven for eleven against Matt. I would bet that there probably isn't anybody else that Matt has faced. Ten times or more in his career who has those kinds of numbers against him. And he finds the inside corner. The change up one and one. AJ passed 2,000 hits earlier this year. He's had quite a career. He was drafted by the Twins 22 years ago. He laces this one toward the gap in right center. Granderson won't get there. And Pierzynski's got another RBI hit. Markakis comes in to score, and Harvey just can't get Pierzynski out. AJ with an RBI double to cut the med lead to three to two. Another fastball up and out over the plate, Gare. Oh, well, might have been a changeup. Eight for twelve. <laughs> AJ Pierzynski now against Matt Harvey. Change up, left it up, and not out over the plate. Is out over the plate, not down and away. Able to get the good barrel to bat. He stayed back on it nicely. So now the tying run at second with two out for Eric Ibar. And he gets out of the way of the curveball. Ball one. And Dan Warthin's going to go to the phone. Harvey at 85 pitches. He's now given up eight hits on the night. Here 
Krasinski at second and two down and Ibar strokes one down the right field line hooking Granderson over and it lands untouched a foul ball. With Ibar up there he doesn't get played to pull so Granderson was well over in right center. If that ball was fair it probably would have been a hit. If you're looking down the line here you just saw Dan Worthen on the phone getting someone up ready I'm sure. Terry mentioned earlier with the two outings uh, Robles had lengthy outings he's going to probably stay away from Robles a night uh, one more night. And I agree. Oh yeah after 60 was it 66 pitches three and two thirds night before last remember he had a long outing two days before that where he threw over 40 pitches. Right. And of course that was the game that the big guy got hit the line drive off of his thumb and they had to leave the game in the first inning and upset the whole apple cart. Cologne. Good slider right there from Harvey. One Robles, of the Robles did a great job that night and so did the entire bullpen and there's Sean Gilmartin. Who started a game for Vegas on Sunday through 100 pitches? So, this is the first day that he's been available since he was called up on Tuesday. And the former Met, Dario Alvarez, up in the Braves' bullpen. Ibar takes just outside and a full count. Emilio Bonifacio would be next. Another switch hitter. Matt trying to get his fifth win of the season. They've been hard to come by. Nine losses ties him for the National League lead. Only one pitcher in the majors has 10 losses. That's Chris Archer, Tampa Bay. 3 2 coming. And Ibar tops it foul. Slider at his feet. Darno's going out to have a conversation before they throw the next pitch to Ibar. Really a beautiful night here in Georgia. Game time, it was 90 degrees. That's why people take the midnight train to Georgia. <laughs> Again, the 3 2. And Ibar pops one up in foul ground. Johnson over near the railing, and he made the catch. Nice play, Kelly Johnson. To end the inning. Braves get a run on the Krasinski RBI double, but Kelly Johnson keeps it from going any further. 3 2 Mets after six.
a second. That never happens in Atlanta. Traffic never moves that freely. It's nine o'clock. I don't know. We've left some games here at you know 11, 11 30, and the traffic's still backed up. By the way, you can't talk on your cell phone like that. That's against the law. You can't talk on your well, cell phone. Was someone on the cell phone? Yeah. Oh well. It wasn't me. I thought you were accusing me. No, no, no. You you're allowed to sit here on your cell phone, but driving <laughs> you can't use a cell phone without a hands-free device. It's dangerous. Curtis Granderson leading off in the seventh inning. Curtis is one for three tonight, singled and scored in the fifth. That's with six hits against Matt Whistler, who has walked three. And Granderson takes a fastball strike, two and one. Well, I must say, home plate umpire Jordan Baker has been called a nice game tonight. He's a little bit under the weather, or we think he is. Well, he's had, he left for an extended period after the first inning, which led us to believe that he was not feeling well. He's been drinking a lot of fluid since then. Yep. He's called a very, very consistent game back there. Well done. Granderson with a three and one advantage. And he hits it in the air to right field. Arcakis is there. One out. It's chicken with Steve Gelbs. His report tonight is brought to you by Jeep. Steve? Gary, you mentioned it earlier in the game. The Mets promoted today one of their top shortstop prospects, Ahmed Rosario, to double A Binghamton. And while he was really probably the best defender at single A last year in the Florida State League, he's taken an extreme jump offensively this year. The organization very happy with his development. He leaves the Florida State League, the leader in hits, tied for second in RBIs, tied for first huh. in triples, and third in batting average in the league. And speaking with the manager for St. Lucie, Luis Rojas, he said that the biggest difference for Rosario is that this year he's gotten a real consistent plate discipline. He's really laying off pitches early in the count that he knows he can't do damage with, even if they're strikes. So he's hunting pitches and he's making much better contact, also learning how to pull a little bit more. Last year he was much more of a uh, of an all fields guy as Cabrera flies out and that's why you see the power up a little bit with Rosario so uh, Rosario a really really good start to the season right now and again you mentioned he's only 20 years old but the Mets have very high hopes for what he could eventually be for this team it really is interesting right now the juxtaposition with the Mets that their shortstop of the future they think Ahmed Rosario is making his way through the system and their shortstop of the past may may become a Met again. Mets are certainly flirting with the idea of signing Jose Reyes when he becomes free on Saturday and serious consideration. Yeah. And um, you know as we said the other day the, the, the best thing about two best things about Reyes are a he really wants to be here and B doesn't cost the Mets anything. B is more important. One thing I think is for certain talking to people in the Mets organization if the Mets bring in Reyes they are not bringing him in to play shortstop Correct. because as Drupal Cabrera has done such a good job playing that position the Mets are not going to move. Him. So. You know, Reyes has never played third base, but if he comes here, it appears as though that's what he's going to be asked to do. Well, he's going to have to take some ground balls. I'm sure he's going to get some work in Triple A. Yeah, they'd send him down for a week to play. I'm sure. Loney three and zero oh, takes ball four, and Loney's on for the third time tonight. Two walks and a single. That's the fourth walk given up by Whistler. Is now up to 100 pitches for the night. And now Neil Walker has had a good night of the play. A walk, a sacrifice, fly, and an RBI single. Playing Neil, a sh not an extreme shift, but certainly the left side of the infield, the shortstop and the third baseman. The third baseman basically in the shortstop position, and I bar the shortstop up the middle. And Walker takes a fastball strike. The 
so his high pitch count this year is 116. He's done that twice, including in his last start. He's had a full week though since his last start against Cincinnati, so seems as though uh, they might be inclined to push him a little bit tonight. But we do a turn at bat in the bottom of the inning. Originally, Whistler was supposed to pitch yesterday against Miami, but they flipped him with John Gant because they didn't want Gant facing the Mets twice in a row, and because Whistler has done so well against the Mets, so they moved him back to tonight. That's why he has a full week. And the dirt to Walker, two and one. Przinsky is very adept at uh, blocking the slider in the dirt. The balls in the dirt. He's been very good. Very. This looks like he's in a rocking chair back there when he goes down. He's done it for so many years. This is kind of one of those sleepy games that you know something can just bust out real quick. Be an explosion in a kind of game like this. It's kind of moseying along. Well, the Braves have been hanging around. That's of lead since the second inning. But just three to two as they bat in the seventh. Well, they're taking there's something going on here. Geez. Clearly some disagreement between Whistler and Pierzynski about what to do next. Contemplate in the bottom of the seventh when I'll have eight, nine, and one to go after. 91 pitches deep in his night. Loney at first and two out. And Walker it's one toward the hole that's a base hit Loney to second he'll take a turn and hold there they throw in behind him and Loney slides back in safely. So Walker has his second straight hit and the Mets have two men on. And that's going to be all here comes Brian Snicker. He brings in a left hander to face Johnson that Terry Collins has an overload of right handed bats. He's got Matt Reynolds in particular, or Wilmer Flores available, and he's going to bring in the lefty. So Whistler done after six and two thirds. Mets with two out and two on in the seventh, as the Braves go to the bullpen. Call to the bullpen brought to you by Verizon. We'll be right back to Atlanta.
Friday night for Neil Walker. A couple of hits, two RBIs. Alejandro Diaz had two hits after an 0 for 20 stretch. He drove in a run. And the Mets lead 3 to 2 as the former Met, Dario Alvarez, comes on. They claimed the Braves claimed him off of waivers, called up on the 14th. Got a win in that three game series. They swept from the Mets in New York. A slider ball pitcher has yet to give up a base hit in his three outings. And brief career with the Braves in over three and two thirds inning. Wilmer Flores will bat for Kelly Johnson with a lefty in the game. Wilmer 0 for his last 11. Went 0 for 4 yesterday. Batting here with Loney at second, Walker at first, and two out. And Alvarez slings in a slider, oh, and Flores fouls it off. Interesting that Flores would get the call here, if only because Reynolds has had some success as a pinch hitter. And Flores has not. It's certainly a big uh, seventh inning. It's a, a good time, a big at bat here. Big Reynolds. run out there to drive in. Reynolds also coming off his first big league home run yesterday. Two out and two on. And Wilmer tries to stop the swing on the slider, but he went around and it's 0 and 2. Whistler leads after 104 pitches. There's that last half swing. I don't think he swung. I'm, I just don't. So you, Alvarez, who pitched in 10 games for the Mets over the last two seasons, claimed on waivers by the Braves, ahead 0-2, and, and Wilmer with a defensive cut fouls off the fastball. Whistler went six and two thirds, allowed seven hits. The three runs so far, he walked four, struck out only one. Very unusual night for the Mets. They've struck out only once and have it an home run. <laughs> it does not happen very no. often that way. Well, strange things always happen when the Mets come to Turner Field. Seems that way. <laughs> but as we mentioned, the Mets have won seven straight games here. They're just starting to win here as they're getting ready to shut it down. Wilmer flies one to shallow left. Coming on is Bonifacio to make the running grab. And that retires the side. So Alvarez comes in to get an out. 3 2 Mets, seventh inning stretch. This game after 91 pitches. Same as Noah Syndergaard yesterday. Syndergaard, it turned out there was a reason. We'll find out whether there is with Matt or whether they just decided to make the move. Wilmer Flores, who pinch it, stays in at third. And Sean Gilmartin, his first outing since returning to the Mets, will pitch. And you can see he's pitched in two games this season for the Mets so far and has been spotless. He started down in Triple A. 
will face the switch hitting Bonifacio turns around about right handed then Jeff Frank on deck to pinch hit and then Jace Peterson in the bottom of the seventh Bonifacio one for two singled in the second and then Conforto made that play against the sidewall against him in the fourth banged his knee but stayed in and Gilmartin starts him off with a slider for a strike. So Harvey leaves after six innings, two runs, eight hits, no walks, three strikeouts, 91 pitches. There's Frank Cora on deck to pinch hit. And the changeup misses, two and one. Gil Martin has spent all of last year with the Mets as a Rule 5 draft pick. Once you take a player in the Rule 5, if you keep him for a full year, you can send him to the minors the next year, and that's what the Mets have done with Gil Martin. But with the team shorthanded in the bullpen, Gil Martin got the call earlier in the week. Logan Verrett was brought back yesterday, and the Mets now have an eight man bullpen to work for. Well, this is all precautionary, of course, just the worst possible. To, uh, setting up for the, if something terrible happens if Cologne can't go. Good fastball away by Sean. Three and, and two. Syndergaard was a question mark. Right. You don't know how he's going to feel uh, Monday. And even Matt's tomorrow. Yep. Yeah. So you got to have you got two guys out there now, Verrett and Gilmartin, that can plug the gap right. and start. Or be that long man if somebody gets knocked out in the first. Outside ball four and Bonifacio draws a leadoff walk. Well, that's not what Gil Martin had in mind. First walk issued by Met pitchers tonight. Let's answer our Verizon trivia question. Most home runs in a season by a Brave. I believe it's Andrew Jones. You would be right. What a year. George Foster, I recall. Was the first guy to hit 50 home runs back in the red, big red machine, Big George, since Willie Mays did it in the right. early 60s. So here's Frank Cor, pinch hitting for the pitcher with the tying run at first. Bonifacio can steal a base, and Gilmartin struggling, misses up and away ball one. No one up in the Mets bullpen. Frank Cor three for 16 as a pinch hitter. Hitting 263 overall with three home runs. Hit one at City Field last weekend. In fact, the home run he hit in City Field was off the facing of the second deck in left field. Went inside. Two balls and a strike. Jace Peterson, left hand hitter, waiting on deck. Bill Martin, who always wears the stirrups. James Loney wore stirrups yesterday. Thought that was a nice touch for the day game. Back to his, uh, his usual pants down approach today. Mm hmm. I never liked that pajama look. That's a little bit too high. Two one coming, and Frenchy reaches for the changeup and fouls it off. Two and two. And there's Loney yesterday with the stirrups. I like the stirrups. It's not soccer. Can't make the world into one. <laughs> <laughs> That's drilled to left. Conforto moves over, diving, and he made the catch. No. no, he dropped the ball. And the runners are safe at first and second. Great effort by Conforto, but he couldn't catch it cleanly. 
A tremendous effort here. Diving. Does he get there? Nope. It just ticked his glove. Now you're going to have a conversation with third base coach Bo Porter and leadoff hitter Jace Peterson. I got to believe they're going to be bunting here, uh, Gary. A well, lefty lefty would make sense. So Gil Martin, a little shaky, his first two batters, a walk and a hard hit single. Well, that was a soft liner, really, uh, but the walk is the uh, cardinal crime so far. So now the tying run at second, the potential go ahead run at first. Mets will look for the bunt from Peterson, who has swung the bat very well today, one for three. Antonio Bastardo, the left hander, Eric Goodell, the right hander, up in the Mets bullpen. And Peterson does square, but pushes the bunt foul, trying to get it to Flores at third, but fouled it off. So the Mets are pl played that bunt normally, didn't do the wheel. The go ahead runs on first. You don't like to do the wheel with the go I don't like the wheel with the go ahead run on first base when you got a first and second situation. Now we'll see how they set up defensively. I don't like the wheel with a position player at the plate. You know? Agreed. If he if he's a smart hitter, he sees the wheel, swings away, finds that empty hole. Exactly. And then you're in big trouble. Yep. And the Mets are gonna play it straight up. Cabrera dashes into second, but Gil Martin steps off. You know, even if you don't make the, the throw to second base, it just gives the the base runner something to think about. It makes him maybe he won't get that one extra step. You might be able to get him at third base. I like that. Peterson drops it toward third, perfectly executed. Flores makes the throw oh. just in time. Peterson almost beat that out. Sacrifice five to four, and we'll see whether the Braves challenge the call at first base. I think they got him by a tick. Peterson's going to hang around and see whether the Braves replay people just suggest a challenge. Beautiful bunt forces the third baseman to vacate. I think they got him. Tim Timmons with the call at first. And now we get to wait for Brian Snitker to decide if he's going to challenge. And he decides he will not challenge. So it's a sacrifice five to four and now the tying and lead runs are both in scoring position. By the way you know who the See, Braves you know who the Braves replay guy is no. Former Met and Braves pitcher Buddy Carlisle. Really He's their replay guy down uh, down in the tunnel. How about that. Here's Inciarte and he fouls off the first pitch slider. Now the Mets are playing their middle infielders back so they'll concede the tying run on a ground ball with that go ahead run at second. It's late you're you're in the bottom of the seventh here in a 246 hitter against left handers on the season. Freddie Freeman another left hand hitter on deck Mark Kakis yet another left hand hitter behind him. And in lifts one to left. That should get the run in. Conforto into foul ground makes the catch. And Bonifacio racing home. The throw and he got him. Oh wow, what a play. Conforto with a great throw and Darno hung in and made the tag. And I'm certain that the Brands are going to challenge yes, this one. I thought he got in, Gare. Let's see. It's a tremendous throw. Now the question is, did Darno block the plate before he had the ball? And then the other question is, did Bonifacio terrible slide, get Gary? The plate? Get your foot on the plate. His lead foot. He got the whole left side of home plate. So Darno did not block the plate until he got the ball. Then he dropped the shin guard. But did he get the tag on Bonifacio before Bonifacio hit the plate? Just a tremendous throw and a horrible slide by Bonifacio. It's all about your beating the tag. So you get your lead foot and the exposed part of the plate. Play under review brought to you by Mazda Driving Matters. To me, it's extraordinary that there's even a close play at the plate because Bonifacio is fast. But Conforto just made a great throw home, even though he, he patted the ball before he threw it. 
It's amazing that he was able to throw him out. Look, he slides into the catcher. He had the whole left side. It's a tremendous block of the plate with the new rules by Darno. Also, didn't block. Look at until the, he got he the whole the avenue, Gare. Yep, yep, didn't block until he had the ball. Then he dropped the shin guard. But did Bonifacio touch the plate? That's the question here. I think he got in, Gare. I think that I. And it's not his left foot. His his lead foot. I mean, the tag didn't come until Darno hit him in the back. I. And he had a lot of. A lot of body passed him that certainly could have touched the plate. The question is whether it did to the satisfaction of the replay officials. Can clear and convincing enough to change the call. And we'll find out Jerry Lane's crew and Mike Winters crew are in the bunker in Chelsea making these decisions as the umpires here wait for the call. Very strong two great plays there two very fine plays strong arm accurate. Good block by Darn. Look, he could have got his lead foot on the on the on the foul side of home plate, and he would have been safe. Just a terrible slide. Well, I'd have to guess that that right leg did touch the plate before Darno tagged him. The question is whether the replay officials have enough evidence. Here they come to make that call. Let's see. And they confirm the call. He's out at the plate. The inning is over. Wow. Michael Conforto and Travis Darno combine on a tremendous play to keep the Mets in the lead and it survives the replay and Brian Snicker wants an explanation of why the call was made. Well, it's been quite a night for Conforto defensively and Snicker has just been thrown out of the game. You're not allowed to argue once a call has been either overturned or upheld. And Snicker is going to get his money's worth now. He has been ejected from the game. Michael Conforto, a fabulous play. And Travis Darno with the plate block to keep Bonifacio from scoring the tying run. And Brian Snicker will watch the rest from his office. The veteran Jim Johnson in the 23 games having a tough run at it. What a play to end that inning. And Michael Conforto, who made that throw, leads off in the eighth inning. What a night for Conforto defensively. He made a terrific play against the sidewall earlier in the game against Bonifacio. And then with Bonifacio trying to score. He throws him out at the plate on this foul fly. Does a terrific job of coming in, getting his momentum forward. Does a double tap, a double tap of the glove, but an accurate, easy one hop for Darno. And then Darno makes a beautiful tag. I thought he was safe. Well, the question is if his right leg ever actually touched the plate, and 
I would have to guess getting in the minds of no. the replay umpires that they didn't see enough evidence to well, definitively obviously. say that that right leg touched the plate. They're not going to they're not going to overturn their brethren out there unless it's obvious. Right. And I think that's and that's what that, it's come to. That's what it, that's what it is. That's what you've created up there in Park Avenue. And I thought Jordan Baker who's called a great game behind home plate was out of position to make that call. He was in for a call strike three to Conforto one out. I mean he put himself in a position on the first base foul line side of the home plate where the catcher Darno when he went to make the tag blocked his view there he's, he's blocking his view he's got to be more over here he knows where the throw is coming he knows he has to anticipate the, how the play is going to evolve and he should be on the third base side to get a real good look. Well this is interesting because we just got the note from the uh, the replay officials we get a little note after each one saying whether the call is confirmed or whether it just stands they're saying the call is confirmed they're saying that they definitively determined that the catcher tagged the runner prior, prior to touching okay. home plate and that that's a little surprising. Well another thing too here a terrible slide by yeah. Bonifacio. Well, he kind of crumpled up in a ball. Rather than well, he slid it. He, the tag the, the throw is coming inside the line the catchers inside in fair territory. So he's given you the foul side of home plate right the whole and back it, side and it's a boom boom play you want to get your foot right there and get and beat him to the beat the beat him uh, with your foot to the home plate. Darno didn't did everything properly. There was an avenue for him to slide into right. and he slid into Darno. Yeah it went right to the shin guard yeah, right into him right. right. Terrible. Three and one to Travis. Oh, he choked that one. Well, the Mets get the benefit of that call, and it's a huge one because it keeps the tying run off the board and enables Sean Gilmartin to survive that bottom of the seventh. Mets got uh, got two calls very close plays in that inning the call at first base on the sacrifice where Peterson was out by an eyelash and then the play at the plate. There are no 0 for three tonight 0 for six since coming off the DL and he bounces one to Ibar nice easy hop. Two out. Let's check in with the studio. Larry Ridley has another game break brought to you by the New York State Smokers Quit Line. Giants are now 20 games over 500. Here's Alejandro de Aza, who's been a big contributor tonight playing center field in the absence of Jonas Cespedes. He's two for three, a single, a double. He's driven in a run and made a couple of fine plays in the outfield. And he takes a fastball strike from Johnson. Matt Reynolds out on deck to pinch hit if de Aza keeps the inning going with the pitcher spot due up next. You know, another thing, too, Gear. Go ahead. Do the road ahead here. Road ahead brought to you by your Tri State GMC. Three more games in this series. 7 30 tomorrow, half hour later. Then the game's on Fox Saturday night. Picks 11 Sunday. Then in Washington for three. And then the Cubs come to City Field yeah. next week. A very that's, big week for the Mets. That's a tough stretch. Well, you got at Washington the four games at home against the Cubs. Then the Marlins come in. And then the Nationals right before the All Star break. You know, I, I just, I'm going to say it real quick because there's three outs. You got no more arguing with umpires. You, you know, if the runner slides in, you can't argue with the umpire, and because it's going to go to replay, it just, it's just terrible. It's just terrible. Well, Snicker argued. He got ejected. Yeah. <laughs> just, just <laughs> bogus.
Cast in the booth and call a Mets game on SNY. Just go to SNY.tv slash KidCaster where you can video audition online for a chance to win the SNY KidCaster contest presented by New York's 529 College Savings Program. Well, not Addison Reed, but Jerry Blevins will pitch the bottom of the eighth inning. You got two left hand hitters due up in Freeman and Marcakis, and perhaps that's why. Or perhaps either Reed or Jay Reese Familia needs a day off after working the last two days. We'll find out. Meanwhile, Blevins has got 21 straight appearances without allowing a run, which is now the second longest streak in Mets history. Well, he pitches to contact. I mean, it's not as though he hasn't given up a lot of hard hit balls over these 21 outings. It's all, it's eight. They're all ground balls in the box score. Exactly. Shift on Freeman here. And Freeman hits a rocket into right center for a base hit. So the Braves have the tying run aboard. Freeman's first hit of the night. There you go, right there, number three for Mr. Blevins. Now, Nick Markakis is two for three today on his bobblehead night. Got a generously scored double and scored a run in the fourth, singled and scored a run in the sixth, both runs driven in by A.J. Pierzynski. 219 hitter against left handers thus so far this season. Levens overthrew that fastball. Ball one. Levens worked yesterday in the seventh inning behind Syndergaard at a 1 2 3 inning, and in that inning he had two balls hit very hard against him. Won a terrific play by Neil Walker and then a line drive to right. But he's been living right and now pitching for a third straight day. And he finds the corner to Marcakis one, one on one. Marcakis two for 12 against Blevins. You got the right hand hitting Adonis Garcia on deck and then another left hand bat in A.J. Pierzynski. Freeman at first and nobody out. And the curveball down to Marcakis two and one. There's Terry Pendleton the bench coach now running the team. Well he's been the brave uniform for quite some time. Won an MVP with the Braves in 1991, the year they went from worst to first. First of their 14 straight division titles. Of course, uh, Terry was a Cardinal before he was a Brave. And then you hear the Braves dugout not happy about that last strike call. Mm, that was not a strike. Darno framing it to the satisfaction of Jordan Baker, and the Mets got the call. Two two from Blevins to Mark Akis, and he shoots mm. one foul. Kind of would make me want to get Wilmer a little bit hugging that third base line a little bit more. You don't want to give up a double here. Matt Harvey went the first six, allowed two runs, eight hits. Sean Gilmartin worked a scoreless inning. After the play at the plate. And now Blevins trying to negotiate a leadoff hit. And he strikes out Marcakis with a curveball for the first down. Not a strike. And that's going to be it for Mr. Blevins as he gets his. One third of an inning in. So, with the right hand hitting Garcia coming up, Levin's exits. 3 2 Mets in the eighth. We'll be right back.
The half an hour later, our coverage begins at 6.30 tomorrow night. Mets and Braves right here on SNY. Your city probable. Stephen Matz goes against the rookie Aaron Blair tomorrow night. Jacob DeGrom Saturday night against Julio Tehran, who pitched that brilliant game against the Mets at City Field, the one hitter. And then Bartolo Colon back from the Brewers' thumb goes against Bud Norris Sunday afternoon. Addison Reed in to face Adonis Garcia with the tying run at first and one out. 3 2 Mets in the eighth. And Garcia takes a knee high strike. Garcia in his return to the lineup is 0 for 3. Reed working a third straight day. And he has had, is having a terrific season. Had Been very consistent out of the bullpen. Had a couple of bobbles that he bounced back from the last two days. Another strong guy, big rubber arm. He likes to throw the fastball. Hard thrower, hard slider. I'm just a little bit confused because most of the year when Reed and Familia have both been fully available Reed's pitched the full eighth and Familia the full ninth but today Terry did a little differently with Blevins starting the eighth against the two lefties Freeman and Marquez. Well we talked in between this inning before it started Gare about you were Garcia cracks one deep left field back goes Conforto at the wall it's out of here. Adonis Garcia greets Addison Reed with a 2 run homer to turn the game around. Garcia's fourth home run of the year on an 0 2 pitch, and the Braves lead it 4 to 3 in the bottom of the eighth. Wow. Oh and two count wants a fastball up in the strike zone. Oh it's belt high down the pipe. A mistake. Oh wow. And Rita has been so spectacular. A stunning blow. Garcia who had sat out for a week other than a pinch hitting appearance or two with an ankle injury had been overmatched tonight in three at bats against Matt Harvey behind in the count and two the fastball up and he crushed it. Now Pierzynski hits one up the middle there's Cabrera behind the bag to field it and he throws him out for the second out. Oh wow. We mentioned earlier that the Braves were hoping for some power from Garcia and he supplies it in a big big spot. Third home run Addison Reed has allowed this season. So the Mets who led all night long they were up two nothing and three to one Braves get a run in the sixth. And then the two run homer from Garcia to take the lead here in the eighth. Well, now Eric Ibar with two out. You know, he wanted a fastball up out of the strike zone, up in his eyes, 0 and 2 to waste, and he put it right belt high over the middle. Ibar trying to bunt his way on. It's 0 and 2. Funny. Well, here's the pitch. Look at this target. Wants it up. Look where it is. Geez, belt high, full extension. I would assume Arodis Viscaino is up in the Braves bullpen. He's been their closer. That's up the middle by Ibar, and he's got a base hit. Another 0 2 base hit. Ibar's second hit of the night. Got to keep an eye on Ibar. Only two stolen bases on the year, but he's got some wheels. It's a good time to try to steal. Well, there's nobody warming up right now in the Braves bullpen. Hmm. So it's very peculiar. Could it be they're going to let Johnson finish the game rather than bring in Viscaino, who has really been good? Let me see what Viscaino. Brandon Snyder's on deck to bat for Johnson, so. That would necessitate bringing in a new pitcher. This Cayano, like Cayano, has not been uh, overworked in the least bit. Nope. Bonifacio singled and walked tonight, and he shoots one foul. And again, Reed is ahead 0 2, which has not been the best place for him to be. Gave up a home run on an 0 2 pitch, then the base hit to Ibar on an 0 2 pitch. Now he's 0 2 to Bonifacio. And there is Vizcaino. Yeah, he was hiding. 
Now he's throwing. He was tantalizing us. Mets will have nine one and two in the order due up in the ninth. That's the pitcher spot probably Matt Reynolds to pinch it unless Cespedes can talk his way into a pinch hitting assignment that remains to be seen. Then Granderson and Cabrera. Cespedes declared himself before the game tonight ready to go but Terry Collins said he wanted to stay away from Cespedes so we'll see whether he gets a crack. One two coming runner goes pitches low Darno's throw to second is in time he got him. So Darno guns down Ibar to end the inning. Nice Second throw. runner that Darno's thrown out in two games since coming back from the disabled list. We what? go to the ninth. Braves have a 4 3 lead. The rumors are the Mets are going to sign Jose Reyes when he becomes available and the NBA draft is tonight we'll have full coverage on Geico Sports Night tonight after the post game on SNY. Well you saw that um, Eric Ibar was thrown out trying to steal to end that bottom of the eighth inning and after the out was made and both teams had left the field the umpires initiated a crew chief review got on headset talked to New York <laughs> and after a couple of minutes they confirmed the call. I, I can't imagine why they initiated a crew chief review. Maybe it's because the call went against the Braves in the last inning and Brian Snicker got ejected. But this whole thing has gotten ridiculously out of hand. Yes. In any event, a Roy yeah. comes in to pitch in the ninth inning. Let's go on to something that involves the game. In the continuance of the game, a Roy having a wonderful year. Uh, he's just been rock solid for this club as, as the closer his last since last season. He's been scoreless in 56 of his 67 appearances. He's got a tremendous breaking ball throws hard. Matt Reynolds will pinch it for the Mets to lead off in the ninth inning a stunning turn of events mm. an 0 2 pitch and Adonis Garcia who hadn't started in a week and had gone over three to that point drilled one for a two run homer to give the Braves the lead. I said back in the seventh or sixth inning Gary this game was kind of meandering around and something was going to happen. These kind of games they kind of slumber around and all of a sudden boom like lightning. 
Curtis Granderson next, then as Drupal Cabrera. But first it's Reynolds who hit his first big league home run yesterday at City Field. That put the Mets over the top in a 4 3 victory over the Royals. And Viscano's first mm. fastball and fouled away. Rodis Viscaino, who originally signed with the Yankees, first came to the big leagues with the Braves in 2011. He went to the Cubs and then back to the Braves two winters ago in the deal that sent Tommy LaStella to the Cubs. And he has been an important pickup for Atlanta. And he gets that curveball in for a strike, and it's 0 and 2. It's that nasty breaking ball that Keith was talking about. Reynolds was able to retrieve his home run ball yesterday, so it's going to hang on to it for the moment and eventually give it to his dad. Ah, sweet. Takes the curveball in the dirt, one and two. Opposite field home run. Game winner. Very nice. Well, Joaquin Soria. He's a hustler. I like him. He, play, he brings energy to the to the game. That's played, with his game. That's played him in left field yesterday, first time in his life, and he handled it just fine. Almost threw out a runner at second base from the left field fence. <laughs> well, the Mets have won seven straight times here at Turner Field. They're hoping to find some magic here in the ninth to do it again. 2 2 from Viscano, and the fastball misses. 99 miles an hour, full count. Nice at bat here. Good battle from Reynolds. Some fresh pine tar in that brand new bat. Three and two to Reynolds leading off the ninth. And Matt takes the breaking ball mm -hmm. for ball four. So after Viscano got ahead 0 and 2, he loses Reynolds to a leadoff walk. Hmm. You could win a trip to Universal Orlando Resort where you'll experience the action, thrills, and excitement of two amazing theme parks and stay on site at Lowe's Sapphire Falls Resort. Go to SNY.tv slash Toyota and enter the fan flyaway sweepstakes today. Okay. Here's Curtis Granderson with the tying run at first and nobody out. Curtis is one for four. He scored a run in the fifth inning. And he takes oh one at his feet for ball one. Mm. So Viscano struggling with his control. Defensively, the Braves outfield a slight pull in center field. That would be Inciarte. The infield a slight pull, not an over pull, a double play in order here. And the veteran shortstop Ibar coming in to try and settle down. His pitcher. That's Dribble Cabrera, who's been hot with the bat, waiting on deck. It's trying to rally right back here in the ninth inning. And Grandison takes a fastball for a strike, one and one. Curtis has two career at bats against Viscano, looking for his first hit. Reynolds at first, not blessed with great speed. And Granderson takes the fastball away, two and one. <laughs> Twenty-seven-year-old Arodis Viscaino. Good pitch to hit, Gary. Struggling with his command. And Curtis drives one to center field in Ciarte there. Mm. And he has it for the first down. No. So one hard out. Reynolds still at first. And now is Dribble Cabrera coming up. Cabrera is one for four. He hit one to the top of the fence in left field for a double and scored a run in the third. Lined out to right field his last at bat. Cabrera has homered each of the last two games leading up to this one. The first shortstop to homer in consecutive games for the Mets since Jose Reyes did it in 2008. 
last time that a shortstop homered in three straight games for the Mets it was Howard Johnson in 1989 mm, my last year with the Mets defense pretty much the same setup as with Granderson Reynolds carrying the tying run at first Mets down 4 3 in the ninth James Loney who's hitting third in the order is on deck. And the curveball in the dirt stopped by Pierzynski. We're right about Pierzynski. He's so oh, solid. He's, he's very good back there. He has been impressive all night. And he makes it look easy. 39 years old and still getting down in the dirt. Leaving that left fish uh, between third and short a big hole for Cabrera. You got a sinker ball pitcher out there. Look at that hole. You can drive a truck through it. Popping for that right that hole right there with a the sinker there. and it's lined at the shortstop oh. I bars got it and Reynolds back to first a bullet off the bat of Cabrera and I bar did well to grab it for the second out. Well I, nothing you can do about that Cabrera had the right idea you got a sinker ball pitcher he wants a ground ball he smoked this ball and Iber it's a big almost, hang with him. I bar almost overran it. Oh so now the Mets are down to their final out. A walk and two hard hit balls against Viscaino, but now he's on the edge of closing it. It's left to James Loney, who's been on base three times tonight with two walks and a single to right. Batting with the tying run at first and two out. That's in danger of losing to the Braves for the fourth straight time after being swept at City Field last weekend. And Loney takes a fastball strike. There's your big shift now with two outs on with Loney. And I don't agree with this. Loney is can has the ability to go to the opposite field. Especially against a guy throwing 99. Curveball down. Ball and a strike. Loney has a hit in his only career at bat against Visca, you know. You're leaving that. I know Loney doesn't hit the ball down the third base line, but there's always the possibility the third baseman's way off the line. And I know they got the left fielder over there, but if he hits a ball down the left field line, that's a tie ball game. One and one to Loney. And the curveball outside, two and one. Loney can keep it going. Neil Walker has had a good night at the plate. Would be next. That's led this game two nothing and three to one. Braves got a run in the sixth, and then the two run homer by Garcia off Addison Reed in the eighth to put Atlanta in front for the first time. And now Viscano trying to seal the deal. Loney smacks one the other way toward the left field line, but overcomes Bonifacio, and the ball game is over. The Braves win in stunning fashion on the two run homer by Garcia. This game survives a leadoff walk in the ninth. The Braves have now won seven of their last eight. And the Mets road trip gets off to a disappointing start with a 4 3 loss in Atlanta. Well, this game was kind of cruising right along. The Braves just kind of hung around and lightning struck in the bottom of the eighth. Addison Reed, who has been Outstanding gave up the home run on an 0 2 fastball to Adonis Garcia, only his fourth home run of the year. And usually the Mets do the damage with the home run. The